Well, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. I own a mill, which means that usually I'm messing around trying to improve it or working on it or repairing it. Sometimes I even make things with it. It's not all that common, but sometimes I do. That's the way milling machines go. This one, however, I've put a fair bit of work into and it's got an issue. The issue being is that this pulley, which doesn't really do anything except drive the vertical head, if you've got a genuine vertical head, it's also a spacer. <clears throat> when I took it apart and put it back together, it never had a key in it. And I guess that's sort of okay. Well, I thought that was sort of okay, but it's not really, because under load, and I'm not sure if the previous owner ever actually worked this very hard, I don't think it did any real hard work, <coughs> but under load, if you stall the mill out, this acts as a flywheel, and this comes undone, and the preload nuts come undone, and all the spindle moves, and that's a problem. So... Hindsight says that we need to fix this. This has got a couple of castellated nuts on it. Then. Look like this. One of them's got a recess in it, so they're probably on in the wrong spot. And one of them's like that. I'm not sure where this one goes, but if we take this off, we can see that it's got a keyway in it, or two keyways. And this shaft has a space here for a little wood rough key. So that's missing, and we need to make one. We need to measure it, and we need to get Machinery's handbook out and see what size it needs to be, really. See, without that nut to tighten everything up, the whole spindle's... The whole spindle's got a little bit of movement, and that's not so good. Anyway, we need to fix that today. This has got a spacer that clamps on the bearing. And when we clamp this down on here, what happens is that effectively the bearings get pulled together and tightened up. However, when it stalls, because this is like a little flywheel, this nut comes undone. So we need to fix that. I'm honestly not sure which way around these go. Um, I'm only guessing really, so I'm going to put them back the way I think they should be. And I'm going to give these a bit of a clean up because they've got a few birds and things on them and they're a bit, a bit ordinary, so we might do that. I think they're both fairly hard, so file and some wet and dry paper might fix that. However, looking at that, we need to measure how wide it is. And if we pull our gauge block set out, probably the best way to tell, um, not sure it's wide enough to get a gauge block stack in there, but we can get pretty close. That's 150 thou's, probably a fraction tight. 140 is probably a fraction, a fraction narrow. Looking at both the pulley and the and the shaft here, that's very close to 130 thou. It might be 132 thou, something like that. I think. 
just double checking it with the gauge blocks. And this diameter here, looks seriously, it looks like probably three quarters of an inch, something like that. Let's have a look. Uh, we know that they come in reasonably standard sizes. If we have a look at R here, I don't really know how the best way to work out that diameter is. Probably the best thing is a set of radius gauges. And that's not touching there, but it's touching on there and there, but not in the middle. So I think it needs to be a bit smaller diameter than 3 8 or 3 quarter. This one's 5 16th, which is 5 8. And I reckon that's pretty close. So we're going to make it 5 8. And if we look at the 5 8 key here, um, size B is 8 by 5 8 and 532 by 5 8. I don't think either of them are really particularly. The best thing to do, I think, is to machine a piece of bar down to 5 8 diameter and part it off and just adjust it till it fits in the slot and then we can mill the top off and we can fit it all together and hopefully that fixes it. Let's go over to the lathe. So we got so far we're down to 632 so that's another sixth hour which is 0.15 on this dial it's only 0 0.075 which is about there it's about two thou up and one and a half thou with a clean micrometer Spot on, I think. Certainly close enough. The book says it could be a thou or so under, and we might just do that. Now, we know that this parting tool is two and a half millimetres thick. So if we set this zero, this, this dial at zero, and move this in, one turns two millimetres, two and a half. That should bring us in line here. Now we were aiming for 132,000, which is there. That's how parting off should be in a baby lathe. That's going to be hot probably, so I'm not just going to pick it up. But we'll try it in the key, and we might set it up back the other way. And uh, if we have a look, machine this pip off the end to just face it till it fits in, and. Nice snug fit, I think we can get that pretty true. 
and then we can find the dimension or look at the dimension in the book and set this up in the vise and machine it down with the mill <coughs> or probably even just file it rather than put the mill back in commission it's not a big deal so let's finish this off and put it back together so I'm not messing around later I've got a little key it's not very big um, very easy to drop and not so easy to find but I've just filed that out of the piece around and with any sort of patience at all we should be able to fit that it should slide on there nicely I hope And hopefully that's not going to come undone. That's the theory. It's another job done. While we're here though, and hopefully this video is still reasonably short, and have a look at this. I've already talked about this. Um, unfortunately, camera mounts on here are another ongoing job. But if we have a look here, at the back of the mill while it's around this way. We've got a lever here. And it's got a nut on it. Oops. A taper and a bent screw. And it's got a taper, it's got a bent screw because it's not really a very good system and it was made like this in the early 40s. So that's, that's a lot of hard use probably. What I want to do is put a worm on here or put a, <coughs> a 40 tooth wheel on here. I think it's about right, 36 or 40. And a worm And a hand wheel here like this so the problem being is that there's not much to how oh, to put this to I'm not sure this is the right hand wheel it feels a bit small and it's a bit light and tinny and come from China it wasn't expensive it can go on something else maybe if I could find a wheel about that diameter would be really nice for this I had thought to machine a taper in the middle of the, the gear or the wheel and put this nut on here permanently so it doesn't come off um, and that means that it never needs to be modified or, or moved again. Then I thought maybe I, this is a machine surface here. Maybe I could put a ball bearing on here or a ball race um, on here. And use that to align it up. Because this surface is curved this way and curved this way, because it's a casting of course and it's English, that makes it very difficult. This hasn't been machined as such. It's been run around with a linisher or something. I don't think it's actually been. I may be wrong, but I don't think. It feels like it's got a bit of taper in it. And it certainly has. So making something to clamp on there is not going to work unless we can set this casting up and machine it. And at this point, I can't see that happening. We could make a boring bar that goes in there with a bar over the outside and crank it by hand because it's only soft cast iron. That might work, but I think we'd end up with results that are worse than what we started with, to be honest. So, what I'm probably going to do, I think, 
is put a bearing on there, make a housing that fits the bearing and is big enough to fit the worm, which will be module 1.5, something like that. And with a couple of bearings or bushes through here for a worm shaft. And slide this on and drill it and put three bolts in it in the right position. And then we could do one of two things. We could put bolts in it and chock them with nuts, which might work. We can make a spacer ring to bolt on here with a couple of screws, to jacking screws so that it's all nice and square when it all goes together. And we could probably run a bit of chalk fast or something like that, an epoxy or something around it to keep the dust out and stop it moving. And a couple of bolts in it to hold it in place and modify the casting like that so that it's got a, a decent flat piece sticking out here, three inches diameter. Uh, not so sure about that. Anyone got any ideas? The Centec 2A, which was a different casting, I imagine, had a big enough boss on here to, or it had the, the, the casing for the, the worm drive, I think was probably almost integral. So that's what I need to do. I've ordered a, a Japanese wheel and worm from KL. So when they come, it's probably a fairly straightforward job to machine the taper and get that to fit on there. That, that's something I can do. Making a housing that aligns on this, and probably the best way is to make a bearing on this, um, that's going to be a bit more tricky. Probably an aluminium ring that bolts on there is probably the best, like I've said. So, anyone got any thoughts? Really appreciate it. like to hear you. have been more than helpful with this mill all the time. Um, you've got some great ideas and I really appreciate everyone's input. If you've got any ideas about this, let me know. This job here is officially done. It's going to be good. Hopefully, it's not going to move again. And we're back into some mill work. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm trying to get into the habit of making videos again. I've been a bit lax lately. And more soon, guys and girls. Be kind to each other.